So there's actually two ways to calculate the electric field to, to a dipole. What the heck is a dipole? So a, a dipole is a pair of equal and opposite charges separated by some distance. And it turns out that it shows up all the time. Uh, we can approximate a water molecule as a dipole. We can approximate some things that, as being dipoles when they're applied in an electric field. So it's kind of an important thing to do. Uh, now, so let me just show you. Here's, here's my dipole. So here I have a negative charge and a positive charge. Uh, in this case, I'm going to use they're both as five nanocoulombs. That's negative five nanocoulombs, uh, and that's lowercase n, and plus five nanocoulombs. And they're separated by some distance s. In this case, I picked two centimeters. It doesn't really matter. Uh, of course, molecules and atoms would be much smaller than that, but we're just doing a dipole. So there's actually two ways to calculate the electric field due to a dipole. The first is the exact way. The, that would be, I'm going to calculate the electric field due to this positive charge and then the electric field due to the negative charge and add it up. And the other way is to do that and make some uh, approximations uh, in the case where you're far away from the dipole. And I'm, I have the derivation of those two uh, equations. There, I'm going to show you what they are right here. I'll link them down below, I promise. There'll be a link to those videos down below to show you how to get these two equations. So this is the far field approximation for the electric field due to a dipole. In this expression, this is the magnitude of the electric field, not the direction. It's not the vector, it's just the magnitude. Uh, this is your 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is your electric constant. That's 9 times 10 to the ninth. It's just a constant. 2 times Q, the value of one charge. S is the separation distance. And R is the distance from the center of the dipole to that point. And this is parallel because it's the uh, expression for the electric field along the axis of the, the dipole. And so it has a 2 there. It turns out that, uh, and this would be, it would be pointing that way too, but it doesn't really matter. If I look at the electric field uh, along an axis perpendicular to the dipole, this way, I can do in a similar approximation, and I get an electric field, the direction is that way, and the the equation looks very similar. It still depends on r cubed, where this would be the r, the distance from the center of the dipole, from the center to there. But there's no 2, and that's the magnitude. So these are the far field approximations for the electric field due to a dipole. Now what I want to do is to calculate. These assume that r is much greater than s. If that's not true, then this equation, these equations don't work. So what I want to do is to calculate the electric field exactly along, I'll just do along this axis, and compare that to this. And so what I'll do is I'll, I'll derive an expression for the exact electric field, uh, and then, which is the same as what you do here, you just make some approximations. And then I will plot, make a, a graph in Python for the values of the electric fields, both of those electric fields as a function of distance, and we can see what happens. Okay, so let's get started with the exact electric field due to a dipole along the axis. So let me put my charges back there. So here I have the minus charge. Here I have the plus charge. And this is the x-axis. And let's just call this the value r. I'm right here at r. And I want to find the electric field. So I have two electric fields. I have the electric field due to this charge. Uh, and the electric field due to a point charge, the magnitude, I'll just write the magnitude, is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. But it's a vector, so it points away from the, the charge or towards the charge if it's negative. So if I want to draw the electric field due to this charge at that location, I'm going to write it right here. It's going to be pointing away that way. I'm going to call it E plus, and I'll put it as a vector. It's E plus because it's the electric field due to the positive charge. Now if I do the same thing for this charge, it will be going towards the negative charge, and I'll call that E minus. Now these two do not have the same magnitude because this point is further away from the negative charge. So the R value for that is going to be greater, and so the electric field will be smaller. But the important thing is that uh, one of these are in opposite directions. So if I write this as a magnitude, I can write the magnitude of E uh, is going to be equal to E plus minus E minus. And I'll, I'll just include that as a negative. Or that's the magnitude. But I've, I, this is the x component. So 
what is e plus? Well, for e plus, I need to deal with this distance. So if this is s, and this would be s over 2. So if that is my value r, this is going to be r minus s over 2. So e plus magnitude is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over uh, this distance squared, which is going to be r minus s over 2 quantity squared. The magnitude of e minus is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. It has the same charge, q, even though it's negative. And it's going to have this distance, which is r plus s over 2 squared. So now I can find the total magnitude of the electric field as e equals 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. I can factor that out. The q I can factor out also. And then I have this, 1 over r minus s over 2 squared minus 1 over r plus s over 2 squared. And you'll notice that this is going to be a positive number because this denominator is bigger than that one, so this is going to be smaller than this term, so the whole thing will be positive. But I can, if I have my value of r, I can find the electric field anywhere. And then, I, so this is uh, the exact method, and then the approximate, I'll call it e far field, is going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q, 2qs, sorry, over r cubed. So I'm going to plot both of these as a function of r, and let's see what happens. Now, I have to be careful, right? Because if I, I don't want to start from r equals 0. Because if I do that, when I move over here and I get to this charge, my, uh, when r is equal to s over 2, then this term will go to infinity and, or to, to 0, and this term will go to infinity. So the electric field goes really, really, really big. I can't do that. So instead, I'm going to start right here. So let's say this distance, if s is 0 0.02, this is 0 0.01. So let's say r0 is 0 0.015. And we can change that. And then we're going to step, we're going to calculate both of these. Step forward, calculate again, step forward, and calculate again. OK, so I'm going to do this in Python. You could do this in paper. You could do this in a normal graph paper. But I'm going to do it in, in Python because it's a little bit easier. So let's jump over there and see what we have. OK, so here we are. Uh, I'm using GlowScript vPython in Trinket.io, and I will give you the link to this code down below so you can play with it. Uh, I already have my constant k. Is that big enough? Let's make that a little bit bigger. Uh, there's my constant k, uh, which is 9 times 10 to the ninth. I didn't put the units, but let's go ahead and put, oops, let's go ahead and put that in there as a comment. So I'll put uh, Newton times meters times meters squared divided by Coulomb squared. And then this is my charge, Q. Q is equal to uh, 10 to the 5 times 10 to the negative ninth Coulombs. And then the distance is meters. Now, uh, what I want to do is to make a graph. So I'm just going to first make the graph of the uh, exact, I mean the far field approximation. So to make a graph in Python, uh, there's, there's a very easy way. I could say this. Uh, this is GlowScript vPython, so it's a little bit different. Um, so one way is to say this, f, uh, f, I'll call that for far field, uh, equals g curve. Color equals color dot blue, label equals far field. So Making FF as a G curve, G curve is an object built into GlowScript vPython that makes a graph. Now I'm going to just plot some points. I'm going to show you how to plot three points. I'm just going to pick some points and then you can see how this is working. So if I say ff.plot and then I give it an x value and a y value, it will put a point on a graph there. So let's just say 1, uh, 1 1.5, I typed 4, and now let's plot another point, ff.plot. Uh, 1.8, 2.2, and one more point, ff.plot, uh, 2.9, 3.5, 2 So now I'm going to run this, and it's going to actually have three points connected by line, and we can see what it looks like. So there's my graph. They're kind of, kind of in line. You can't see the points because they're connected 
by lines. I didn't show those points. Okay, so let me put this over here. You want to see me probably. I don't know. Maybe you don't. I don't. It doesn't really matter. Um, okay, but we don't want to do that manually. We want to we want to automate this whole process. So I can do that with a loop. So let's get rid of this, and let's say r equals 0 0.015. That's why I said. Now I'm also going to pick a position step. How big of a step do I move in each time? And I will call that dr for delta r. And let's say that's 0 0.001. Yeah, that's good. And I'm going to just do a really short loop. Uh, actually, let's do this as 0, 1, 0, 1. Right. Let's do this. While, I'm going to make a loop, while r is less than 0 0.02, do the following. Print r, which is dumb, but we're going to do it anyway. And then increase the r value. r equals r plus dr. Now, there are more than ways to do this. But this is the way that I like to do it because I think it makes the most sense to students. Um, it's not always the best way. You don't have to do Python the best way. You have to do it the way that you understand. This equation right here says take the value of r, add the value of dr, and then make that the new value of r. So it actually changes that variable, which is really nice. Um, I think this will run right now if I run this. And there you go. See, I get 0 0.015 and it increased by 0 0.001 each time until it got to 0.19. Once it got to 0.12, it said it was no longer less than, so it stopped. I could do uh, less than or equal to if I wanted that 0 0.002, but I don't really care. Okay, I know how to change ours. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate E far field. So I'm going to say EF is the far field approximation of electric field, and it's going to be K times. 2 times q times s divided by r cubed. That's just that equation. I'm just typing that equation. Um, so just a quick note. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I want to move that one. Um, in Python, uh, raised to the power is star star, not hat. Okay, so if you see hat in a lot of things, Python uses star star. So there's my value of my electric field. Now I just want to plot that. So instead of plotting a number, I'm going to plot a variable. ff.plot, the x coordinate, I want r, the y coordinate, I want ef. And now I need to increase my value of r. So I'm going to again say r equals r plus dr. Now I'm going to run this. And there you go. It's not very many points, right? And they're not very spaced out, but it does seem to decrease as I get further and further away. So that's good. And I can change these values I like, and it doesn't really matter. It's all good. Um, let's make this graph a little bit better. If I go up here and say G1 equals graph, I can give it a, a title. Title equals uh, electric field. No, not filed. Due to dipole. Uh, I can give it an X label. X title equals uh, R in meters. And these are just text, right? It doesn't really matter what it is, uh, what you put in the text. And then the Y title, which is the, the vertical axis, I'm going to say that's equal to E in Newton's per coulomb. OK. Uh, I can also do this. I think I'm going to do this. I, you can return and add it on there after a comma. I can say the width of the graph is 450 and the height is uh, 300. So let's run that and see what happens. So you see, I get a smaller graph. I can see the whole thing. Uh, it has, you can see that label on there for the graph. It shows that blue curve, a title, an x-axis, everything. It's pretty grand. Okay, I'm pretty happy. Now I need to calculate the exact electric field. I'm just going to type in that equation. So let's just say, actually, up here I'm going to say uh, Fe for the exact electric field. It's going to be another curve. It's going to be red. And I'm going to call this. Uh, exact. And so down here I need to calculate that. So let's say EE e for the exact. Uh, I'm just looking at my equation right here. I have K times Q times parentheses 1 divided by R minus S over 2, all of that squared. And then I have minus, no, yes, 1 divided by R plus S over 2 quantity squared. Now I'm going to plot that. 
fe dot plot are ee. So let's run this. And there you see two graphs, and you see that they do not agree. Okay, they're not exact, but they're very close. Um, the 0 0.5 times 10 to the six. Well, not really. Um, but let's so let's expand the range over which we calculate this. And you notice that we're at the far field approximation that assumes r is much greater than s. But here I'm at uh, s of 0 0.02 and r of 0 0.15, 0 0.015. So it's not great. It's actually less than. So it's not even anywhere near that. Um, so the first thing I want to do is I want more data points. So I want just have 10 times more data points. Run that. You see it's smooth now. And let's make this go from uh, to r is 0 0.05 just for fun. There you go. So this is a pretty good graph. You can see here over around uh, r is uh, 0.3, that's 3 times 10 to the negative 2, 0 0.03, uh, it, they, uh, they're pretty much the same. Okay. In fact, let's even start from there. Let's start from r equals, um, I'll just put r equals 0 0.03 and run it. And now you can see they're very close together. Okay. And the, the further away I get from the dipole, the better that approximation is and the closer those two graphs are. So let's even go to, uh, let's go to 0.07. There you go. And you can see they're very, very close. But that shows the difference between the far field approximation and the exact calculation for the electric field due to this dipole. Uh, it's also great practice with Python. And there's nothing in here that you had to do with Python. You could have done this in a spreadsheet or any other graphing program. But uh, I like it this way, and I think it makes very pretty graphs, and I'm excited. You could redo the same thing for the electric field on the, on the vertical axis. It's a little bit more complicated because those two electric fields are not right in the same angle, so you got to do some other stuff, but it's not too hard. Uh, I might do that, but I, I, maybe that will be a nice little homework assignment for you that I'm not going to grade. Okay, there you go. Uh, three things down below. The electric field, far field approximation, two videos for that, and then this code down below. If you really need uh, more uh, practice with graphing, just leave a comment down below and I'll include some more graphing tutorials. But other than that, I'll talk to you guys later.